Hi, everyone. I'm Mikey Stiller, the Director of Marketing for the Proctor Gallagher Institute, and we are so happy to be back with you again today with another Q&A. Like I mentioned yesterday, Bob did a quick Instagram story uh, a few days ago after dinner, and we had a flood of questions come in, hundreds and hundreds of questions. So Bob wanted to answer these in a live forum. We've categorized them, and what we're doing is we're asking the most question first and we'll just work our way down. Bob, we've got a lot of questions here. Are you ready to get started? Bob is all ready. Greetings. Welcome everyone. This first question, how do I eliminate fear and have faith and believe in the unseen? Hmm. Well, first of all, you don't necessarily eliminate the fear. You've got to face the fear. You're dealing here when you go from faith to fear and belief. Um, let me explain it this way. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to go on camera here for a moment. Here. Let's understand the law of polarity decrees everything has an opposite. You've got a negative, you've got a positive. You wouldn't have an inside without an outside. Okay? There's the front of the camera, the back of the camera. Now over here, we'll have ignorance. And the opposite of ignorance is knowledge. Because a person's in an ignorant state, they will worry and hold doubts. Now, the polar opposite of worry and doubt is understanding. I, I'm going to do a webinar and really teach this to you. Worry and doubt cause understanding. And the worry and doubt develop into an emotional state called fear. Understanding develops into an emotional state called faith. Now, here's the strange thing. Both of them demand that you believe in something you cannot see. Here's the trick. The only way to develop understanding is through study. Solomon said, in all you're getting, get understanding. Now, the fear manifests on a physical level as anxiety. The, fear, the faith manifests on a physical level as well-being. Now, this goes on from here. The anxiety is suppressed. The suppression turns to depression. Depression turns to disease. Disease turns to disintegration. That's why St. Clair Lewis said, we don't die, we kill ourselves. We just do it so slow. Our bodies become so corrupt, we can't stay in them. Now, we will teach that in another time. But the fear, whenever you go to do something you've never done before, it's going to be natural that you experience fear. Fear is caused by the unknown. So when you go to do something, it can be scary. If you understand the creative process and you're a creative being, then you can get around that. You've got to understand how your mind works. See, on a conscious level, we have a choice. Now, we can stay and draw on ignorance, or on the other side, if we study, we can develop understanding. When I was 26, a man gave me this book. And he said, if you will study this and you do exactly what I tell you, you can have anything you want. Now, I mentioned last night, I didn't believe that, but I believed he believed it. Well, I didn't go back to school. I never had any formal school. I had two months high school. I was earning $4,000 a time, a year, earning millions of dollars today, and I travel all over the world. I live a, it's almost like I live a charmed life. But it was a choice. Now, when I was having all kinds of trouble, up until I was 26, I didn't have a very happy life. In fact, I had a very unhappy life, but I had a choice. I didn't understand that I had the ability to change it. You and I have the ability to change it. Think of this. We are the only creature on the planet that's totally disoriented in our environment. All the rest of the little creatures, the squirrels, the fox, the deer, they all blend in with their environment. We're totally disoriented in our, in our environment. They're completely at home in theirs. But we are totally disoriented. And that is because 
unlike all those other four little legged creatures, we've got the godlike ability to create our own environment. We've been given higher faculties. We have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition, and we can create our own environment. Now, you don't let the fear stop you. If you let fear stop you, you're going to stay right where you are. You face the thing of fear, and fear will leave you. What you want to do is develop understanding. In all our programs, that's what we teach. It's, it's, um, <laughs> when you start to understand who you are, how your mind functions, and the relationship of the mind to the money in the bank, or the relationship you've got, or the health of your body, or your energy level, that's when you really start to live. I think that's all I got on that, Mikey, for right now. Now, belief, you had belief. Our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. Now, I want you to listen carefully. Our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. Frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about it will change. Do you know that most of our beliefs are absurd? You see, we didn't develop our beliefs. Maybe a little bit, maybe one or two. Most of our beliefs we inherited. They were built right into the genes at birth. God, they've come down from generation to generation to generation. Somebody a long time ago decided something, they believed it, we inherited it. But some of our beliefs are crazy. Like there's a belief about age. <laughs> I'm glad I got rid of that because I'm 83 years old. And most people say, well, you get older, you should slow down. That's a bunch of crap. As you get older, you should speed up. All the energy in the universe is 100% evenly present in all places at the same time. It's omnipresent. All the knowledge is omnipresent. Like, all the knowledge is here. We don't have to get it. We've got it. We've got to bring it out of ourselves. Well, if all the energy is present, then I've got it within me. All I have to do is release it. Now, the older I get, that shouldn't mean that I'm going to release less. The older I get, the more I should release. Do you know what the triggering mechanism to release energy? Desire. Do you have the desire? See, I've got the desire, baby. I mean, I, I'm involved in such phenomenal information. We're bringing out a program. You've got to find out about it. They'll stick it on the screen there. Send, just send your name, your email, and stuff like that, and we'll send you the information. Because this program that we're putting out, it is a mind blower. It's made up of everything that I use to change my life. No formal education, no business experience. I was going nowhere in a hurry. Today, I have a company that operates all over the world. We've got phenomenal staff of people in our company. And uh, it just keeps getting bigger and better. It can for you, too. All you have to do is study. All right, Mikey, what's the next one? How do you find your life purpose or passion? Ah, your life's purpose. You don't find it. You, you, well, you do find, you discover it. Our purpose, this is interesting. Your life's purpose is your reason for living. Um, I like the way my uh, good friend says it. Um, how do you put it? The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you decide or discover why you were born. Les Brown says that all the time. And I like him when he says that. Now, the day you're born, and two most important, uh, two most important days, the day you're born, the day you discover why you're born. Your purpose is why you get out of bed in the morning. Your purpose is why you're living. I obviously have found my purpose. I love what I do. I absolutely love it. I'm passionate about it. I help people understand who they are, how to change their life, how to go from being broke to becoming wealthy, being unhappy to be happy, how to be in a bad vibration to be in a good vibration. That, that, that is my purpose. I've studied it. I love it. I live it. Most people have never discovered why they're here. How do you discover it? You sit down and totally relax. Get yourself a pad and a little pen and put it somewhere beside a chair, a favorite chair. Um, discipline yourself maybe at the same time every day, early in the morning, to go and sit there. And the only thing you put in this pad is what comes to your mind. And ask yourself, it's a, it's a little game you play. If I could do what I loved 
every day. That's all I do is what I love every day. I come in here into this studio that I'm in. This studio is in my backyard. I can broadcast all over the world from here. Now, my company built it for me. This is what I do. And ask yourself, if I could do what I love all day, what would it be? That's where your purpose, that's where you're going to find your purpose. That's where you're going to find it. I watched, I'll give you a good example. I watched a, a very pretty woman uh, being interviewed on television. And she um, uh, had been a dancer in a chorus, in a chorus line. And she said, you know, I was a pretty good dancer, but I wasn't the best. I knew I was always going to be in the chorus. I would never be the star, because I wasn't that good. And she said, I liked it, but I didn't really love it. And she said, I sat down one day and I thought, what do I really love to do? She says, I love baking pastry. It's quite a switch from dancing. She got out of the dancing business. She moved to France and went to work with some of the best pastry chefs in the world. Now, when I saw her being introduced or interviewed, she was one of the top pastry chefs in the world. She was doing what she loved. That's what you got to do. You got to find out what you love. That's what you're going to be passionate about, and that's what you should be doing. And it doesn't matter whether you're earning any money on it or not. You see, you don't earn money from working. That's a myth, and it's not a very good one. It's a belief of most people, and it's a silly one. You earn money by providing service. You can, uh, you can earn more money when you're sleeping than you could spend when you're awake if you learn how to provide the service. Next one, Mikey. All right, Bob, this next question. How do you increase your discipline and focus? How do you increase your discipline and focus? Can you provide an affirmation? How do you increase your discipline? Well, first of all, understand what discipline is. Discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and then follow it. That's really what discipline is. It's the ability to give yourself a command and follow it. Now, focus is an act of the mind. You have a will, a will. You have uh, perception, reason, imagination, memory, intuition, and the will. The will gives you the ability to focus on one thing. How do you do that? Most people, if they focused on one thing for more than three seconds, they'd probably set a family record. Most people's their minds all over the place. The most successful people are very focused. If you take and put a little dot with a pen or a marker on the wall opposite your favorite chair, don't tell anybody you're doing it. If they see it, they'll, they'll think it's a fly or something, won't pay any attention. But put a little black dot or ink dot on the wall opposite your favorite chair. When you're sitting in the chair, practice, totally relax and stare at that black dot. Just stare at that black dot. Now you're going to find your mind will wander. You only stare at it for a millisecond and your mind will be gone somewhere. You'll hear something, a sound, a siren, and your mind's gone. Bring, don't feel bad about it. Bring it right back to the dot. Bring it back to the dot. Bring back. And every time you sit in that chair, now if you will turn, turn that into a habit, I guarantee you, you'll become strong focused. I was working, I was out on the uh, golf tour with one of the pros and um, we were sitting around a room in a night between the two rounds and he asked me about that and that's what I taught him. I said, sit down, relax. And I went to the opposite wall and I put a little dot in the wall. Now I said, focus on that. There's another way of doing it. Light a candle in a candle holder and put the candle somewhere near your favorite chair and just stare at the flame. Keep concentrating on the flame until you become one with the flame. Find your mind wander, bring it back to the flame. Now that's how you focus. And what you're doing is you're strengthening your will. When you do this, you're strengthening your will. Um, and uh, <laughs> once you get it strong, you know, you can keep making it stronger. It's like anything. It's like your body. You exercise it, it'll get strong. And if you don't, it'll get very lethargic. Develop your will. That's how, uh, that's how you develop the focus. And can you provide an affirmation? Well, I, anybody can make an affirmation. It's just a positive statement from yourself to yourself. I always like, I'm happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful. Now that I have the ability to focus and I don't take my mind off my focus. So you see, when you see this and you know this and you can focus, that's when you're away to the races. Now, I don't know... Um, 
how many of you are watching this Facebook presentation, but I do know this. If you will take an act on this idea, you're going to find it'll work very, very well for you. Okay? All right, Bob, the next question. Can you talk about changing paradigms and explain paradigm shift? I can. Um, I did that last night. I'll do it one more time. Let me, here. I'm going to ask you to let this represent your mind and this represent your body. Now that would be you today. The top half here is your conscious mind and this is your subconscious mind. Now when you were born, this is how you arrived on the scene. Okay? Now think of this. I'm going to talk here about environmental conditioning, but Prior to that, from the moment of conception, you were being programmed. A little particle of energy from mom and a little particle, particle from dad came swimming along and like that. That was the beginning of you. That was the nucleus of you. And 50% of mom's came from her mother, 50% came from her father. 50% of dad's came from his mother, 50% from her father. Now we can say the same with the grandparents and on and on and on. So there's a train here. It's a, a composite. It's a, uh, a, a, a train of genetic uh, conditioning that flows down and boom, that's what you became. Now that's why you look like your relatives. This is not an accident. That's why you look like your relatives. Yeah, and, and you may skip a family. When I was a kid, I had red hair. Now, I have a brother and sister. Neither of them have red hair. My mother and father didn't have red hair. That could lead to all kinds of speculation, couldn't it? But my mother's father and all his brothers had red hair. So you see, sometimes it'll jump one generation and come out in the next. Now, that's called genetic conditioning. Okay, that's built right in at birth. Then when you're born, this is the way you are. And whatever's going on around comes right into the subconscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind has absolutely no ability to reject. It'll accept everything that's given to it as real. It doesn't matter whether you imagine it or it's a fact. When it goes in here, the subconscious mind accepts it. It is totally deductive. It has no ability to reject. Now, then as you grow, the top half here starts to develop. That's your conscious mind. Your conscious mind has hooked up to its senses. You can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. You also have the ability with reason to choose. So as an idea comes along now, if it's an idea and it comes into your mind, you have the ability to accept or reject it. The problem with most people is they don't. They just pass it right on that comes in here. Well, the paradigm is formed. It's nothing but a multitude of ideas that are fixed in the subconscious mind. And the paradigm controls our behavior and our behavior produces results. How do you change the paradigm? First, you really got to understand what I'm talking about here. Takes a little bit, but you can do it. I've taught this to people and watched dramatic changes take place in their life. Um, things happen that doctors and people say couldn't happen. Well, I'm going to tell you, all things are possible. And what you got to do is learn how to consciously and deliberately plant ideas that are essentially opposite to the paradigm. Your paradigm is made up of your beliefs and your thoughts. And what you want to do is work at changing those. Okay? And you change them through repetition. Now, let me come back here for a moment. You want to find out what your paradigm is. Watch your habitual behavior. And your behavior is habitual. You see, you could be the smartest guy in town. Your intellect is here in the consciousness. This is the part school focuses on. So the books pile up here. You got a person that's absolutely brilliant. They remembered everything in the books. They passed all their exams and whoo, away they went. But they've got a very, very negative paradigm. They've got a limiting belief system in their paradigm. Where'd they get it? Well, they got it away back here. They may have inherited it. 
It was the environment they grew up in. Well, the paradigm controls the behavior, and that's what accounts for really brilliant people getting bad results. Brilliant people that are broke. Take somebody else who really doesn't know a hell of a lot, hasn't got a lot of knowledge, but they earn a lot of money. I had two months high school, absolutely no business experience, and in a matter of a year, I multiplied my income by 43.75. That took me from 4,000 a year to 175,000 a year. Wham! Under five years, it was up over a million. If I can do that, you can do it. But you've got to change the paradigm. And if you don't change the paradigm, it isn't going to work. It's that simple. Okay. What's the next one there, Mikey? This next question, Bob, is any tips and tricks to help with visualizing consistently and daily? All right. For visualizing consistently and daily. Well, here's what you want to understand. Visualizing is an exercise of your imagination. I'll come back here to the drawing board again. Let me take this. I don't know, does that show up there? Can you see that there? You can, all right? Now, here you have your senses. See, hear, smell, taste, touch. You also have an imagination. Your imagination is a magnificent, Hill said it's the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world's ever known. There's a power flowing into your consciousness. It never stops. It flows to and through you. You can actually photograph this energy leaving your body. You can learn to read it, too. I could read your energy like a book. Now, as this energy comes in, your imagination gives you the ability to build the picture. And you can build any picture you want. And what you want to do is, with your imagination, build an image of something absolutely incredible. And then you turn it over to your subconscious mind. This is the part the early Greeks called the heart. That's why Solomon says, as a person thinketh in their heart, so are they. Because whatever's impressed has to be expressed. So it's the image that you impress that controls the vibratory rate of the physical body. I was working with Matt, who's our, in our creative department, and um, today, and we've been working on a special video that we're going to be putting out, You're gonna, you'll hear about it, and it's on attraction, the law of attraction. You see, the law of attraction is a secondary law, it's not a primary law. If you don't understand the law of vibration, you're never going to understand the law of attraction. And everybody's impacted by that. Well. The visualizing is use the imagination. You've got to sit down and become the actor. And you start to see yourself with the good that you desire. And then, as you start to impress it, this is your emotional mind. This is your intellectual mind. This is your emotional mind. And as you pass this over to the, the emotional mind, it sets up a vibration in the body. And that's called feeling. So you've got to feel yourself already with the good that you desire. Now, if you have to write a little note to yourself, and carry it around and uh, hold it in your hand. And you just take a little note and hold it in your hand. Every now and then, stop for a few minutes, go sit somewhere by yourself, and totally relax. Tell your body to relax. It's your body. You're not a body. You live in a body. So say, just relax. Just relax. In fact, try this right now. Let all the muscles in your stomach relax. Let them all relax. Let it all hang out. Come on, just, just let it hang out. Now, let your jaw relax. Just let it relax. You didn't even notice your jaw wasn't relaxed. Just let it relax. Now get yourself into a totally relaxed state. And then start holding the picture and getting emotionally involved with the good that you desire. I mentioned something yesterday. I'm going to mention it again because I think it's very important. Get this book. This is Stella Adler's book, The Art of Acting. It is an incredible book. Really good. She was Marlon Brando's teacher. Art of acting. You want to act like the person you want to become. Way back 1900, William James said that. It's the actor's technique. There you go, Mikey. Thank you.
Thanks, Bob. You know, you touched on this question yesterday, but we have gotten so many requests for it that I'm going to ask you to talk about it again today. And that is how do you find the right relationship or attract a specific person? Hmm. I did talk about it yesterday. I don't know what you've done with your sound, Mikey, but it's working really good now. There you go. I'm going to show you. I'm here. I have these up all over the place before I know it. Okay. First of all, the law of attraction is always working. You're attracting people into your life that are in harmony with you. If you don't like them, you've got to change you. That's really what it is. Now, I want you to get a little three by five card, not very big. Don't tell anybody you're doing this. And you write in here, my man or my woman. Whichever you want. Not both, one. <laughs> Don't be greedy. All right, now think. My man or my woman, what kind of a person do I want? I'll tell you what you do not do. You have no right. You cannot put a face on them. Well. Then make this like a starburst and put lines coming out of it. And on these lines, you write all the qualities you want this person to have. Okay? As I was mentioned last night, you want somebody to be intelligent. You want them to have a sense of humor. You might as well have them wealthy. There's no sense in hanging around somebody that's broke. You might find somebody that's really interesting. Find somebody that's really into personal growth. Okay? And you write all these things down. You want to have somebody that's good looking. They're attractive. Okay? So you write all these things down, and then mentally you sit down. Don't put a face. You'll see somebody and think, she's the one, or he's the one. No, 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 no. You don't put a face on the person. And you sit down, you totally relax, and you take and you see each one of these characteristics being expressed. You may see yourself sitting down having dinner, and you're carrying on a real interesting conversation with this person. You're um, out for a walk with the person. You're holding their hand. You can actually feel their hand. And you do all this mentally. That's where you're given an imagination. That's where it all starts. Everything you see was first created in imagination. Hold it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. Well, you see yourself with this person. You go for walks with them. You talk to them. You have lunch with them. You have dinner with them. You make love to them. You do everything that you want to do with this person. Now, what you're really doing is putting you in that vibration. And you do this often, you'll start to move into that vibration, and this person becomes really alive. Do you know what will happen? One day, bang, you'll walk on an elevator, and the other person will walk on, and it's like a shockwave somebody that's in that vibration. They're just going to walk right into your life. I say, well, I don't believe that. Then it won't work for you. But I'm going to tell you something. The law of attraction always working, and you can only attract to you what you're in harmony with. By doing this, you'll be in harmony with a person that has all those qualities. And what you've done is strengthen all those qualities in yourself. There you go, Mikey. Thank you, Bob. This next question, can you explain the law of vibration and the ether? The law of vibration and the ether? Well, <laughs> people have a difficult time believing what they can't see. And if you only believe the things you can see, you're not going to win. I think it was Lincoln one time said, to believe in the things you can see and touch is no belief at all. But to believe in the unseen is a triumph and a blessing. Now, the law, of, the law of vibration in the ether. Everything vibrates, nothing rests. We know that we can take and strike the key on a piano and a prism on a chandelier will vibrate. They're on the same frequency. Vibration is the law of the universe. Your body is a molecular structure. It's a mass of energy and a high speed of vibration. When you think, what you're doing is activating brain cells. Those brain cells set up a vibration in your body. It's the vibration you're in 
That's the energy you're sending out. If you've got a nasty personality, a nasty attitude, you're going to attract some nasty stuff to you. You've got a happy attitude and a happy personality, you're going to attract some happy stuff to you. Vibration is the law of the universe. The law of vibration decrees everything moves, nothing rests. You and I literally live in an ocean of motion. This desk is made of wood. This paper is made from wood. Wood is energy at a certain speed. The paper's energy at a certain speed. I have a little clock here. This was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. It was a gift from me to me. All right? And it's made of metal. We call it metal because of the speed it's vibrating at. We call this skin because of the speed it's vibrating. We call this cloth because of the speed it's vibrating. We call this hair because of the speed it vibrates at. Vibration is the law of the universe. Everything vibrates from a lower to a higher vibration. And what you want to do is keep raising your level of vibration. Now, in the program that we've got coming out, we teach all the laws. One at a time. Boom, 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 boom. You will learn every one of them. We have a new program coming out. It's called the new Lead the Field Coaching Program. It's an entire program Earl Nightingale wrote. And in it, he wrote it way back 1960, 59, 60, 61. He had all the laws hidden in it. They were all woven into it. Because nobody talked about spirit. We didn't talk about the laws. We didn't talk about potential the way we do today back in the late 50s. I started to work with Earl. I started to study his material in 1961. In night, and I had a very successful career because of you. And then I went to work for him in 1968. He and Lloyd Conan owned the company. They were great men. Well, I have since made a, a, a business arrangement with Vic Conant, who is the chairman of the company. And he and I have agreed, and we put together a program. And this program, this is it. It's powerful, really powerful. And we take everything we'll put in, and then I explain it. Like he talks in the first recording is about the magic word is attitude. Well, you know, he talks about it, and he talks about it having, you know, three phases, thoughts, feelings, and actions. You know, it's the way you think, feel, and act. Well, that takes in three parts of your personality. He didn't get into that, didn't get into that. I take and I break it all down. And I show that one part of your mind is the part that thinks. The other part feels. That's the, that's the energy. That's the spiritual side of you. And then you've got the physical part. Well, your attitudes, when all of those are lined up, you can be thinking one thing and feeling another. You've got to get them all in sync. It's also what they call integrity. It's a phenomenal program. Vibration is one of the laws. We teach it in depth. Give me another one, Mikey. All right, Bob, this next question. How do you reject negative thoughts and energy from others? How do you reject negative? Well, this is where you've got to really be thinking. Um, you have a reasoning factor. Information is coming in from outside. You've got the ability to think about everything you hear, see, smell, taste, or touch. And what you've got to start to do is ask yourself, is this going to serve me? Is this going to help me? Is this going to move me in the direction I want to move? And if the answer is no, reject it. Now, you've got some people that are always complaining about everything. It doesn't matter. And they think they're brilliant because they're so good at finding it. You'll find uh, disc jockeys. That's how they create their show, talking about what's wrong. And they sound so brilliant. Don't listen to them. You have the ability, when you hear something or you feel something, to reject it. That's what separates you from all the rest of the animal kingdom. You do not have to accept it. Just know that you can reject it and just say, I'm just not going to accept that. Now, you may be uh, dealing with a spouse. It could be a family member. It could be somebody that you love very dearly who's very negative. Use their negativity as an instrument to make you stronger. You are not going to get involved in their game. You are not going to go with them. Listen to them. doesn't matter what they say. Say, yes, I understand. And then change the subject. What you mean is I understand you don't understand, right? And then change the subject. You can reject. It's done with a reasoning factor. That gives you the, your reasoning factor thing gives you the ability to think. Just get rid of the idea. Next one, Mikey. How do you live from your wish fulfilled? How do you live from your wish with your imagination? Oh, yeah. You, um, 
what you've got to do is use your imagination to go on into the future. And you see yourself where you want to be. And then you bring the future into the present. Now, to some people, that sounds absolutely absurd. But that's how everything's done. Ed Hillary saw himself standing on the top of Mount Everest. He kept that idea in his mind for a long time. He went to Nepal three times before he got to the top of the mountain. And he, everybody believed he couldn't do it because nobody had ever done it, but he saw it. Van Gogh was asked one time, how do you do such beautiful work? He said, I dream my painting and then I paint my dream. You've got to live your dream. Get the dream and live it. Live it. Hold the picture in your mind. You wouldn't have the mental faculties to do it if you weren't able to do it. You've got to use it. Your imagination is the most marvelous tool you've got. Understand that everything that's created is created twice. This pen is created in somebody's mind first. And then it was created on the physical plane. I think we've lost Mikey. I'm still here, Bob. Can you hear me? I can. How do you stop procrastination? How do you stop procrastination? We had that, you, that question we asked last night. You stop procrastination by learning how to make decisions. And I mentioned last night, there's an excellent chapter in here on making decisions. And it's one that everybody should study. It's a phenomenal book. Um, he, uh, he writes about it really well. And I think anybody that reads this is going to be a way to the races. He, um, Napoleon Hill, this is Napoleon Hill's book, and let me just get to that. It's chapter eight, and it's the seventh step to riches, and it's on decision. And it's an absolutely incredible chapter. Um, he, um, it's one of the best things on decision that you're ever going to read. It really is. Let me read you something right from the first page. I love it. Listen to this. Accurate analysis of over 25,000 men and women who had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the list of the 30 major causes of failure. This isn't any mere statement of theory, it's a fact. Procrastination, the opposite of decision, is a common enemy which practically every person must conquer. Now, he says, analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark, and keep in mind, this was written way back around 1930, well beyond the million dollar mark, disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing those decisions slowly if and when they changed them at all. People that didn't do it, they just didn't make decisions. People that make, don't make decisions don't go anywhere. The people that do make decisions, they just keep going up. If you will find someone and read with them, find someone and read with them. I've been reading with Sandy Gallagher two chapters out of this book, Entering Into the Spirit of It and Yourself by Thomas Troward. And it's your hidden power is the name of the book. It's a phenomenal book. And Troward's one of the, in my opinion, one of the greatest authors that's lived in the past 500 years. Sandy Gallagher and I started on the 1st of December last year. We read these two chapters together every day for 180 days. Now, she lives away out in Wigby Island off Seattle. I'm in Toronto. But you know, you can get on the phone and away you go. Now, I'll read a few lines and say pass. Then she reads a few lines and says pass. I read a few lines and say pass. And the beauty of that is, while she's reading, I got to be reading along looking. When I'm reading, she's got to be reading on. And we will say pass at different times just to see is the other person really on. Every now and then she catches me and every now and then I catch her. But we're back at reading it again. We took about a month off and now we're back in and reading again. That's what you want to do with someone. They don't have to be near you. They could be your spouse, could be somebody next door, maybe somebody you work with. Read the chapter on decision every day for 60 days. I'm going to tell you, your attitude towards decision will change and your procrastination will be gone. That's the way it's done. The next one there, Mackie. What are good routines for success? What are good routines for, good routines for success? Well, there's all kinds of them. And I can, uh, I, can, I can give you just basic, get up early. All the successful people I know start early, okay? Get up early. Just make up your mind that you're gonna get up early 
and you're going to move into action. When you wake up, get up. Number two, study. Study. Every day, study. I've been doing it now for 57 years, every day. Prior to that, I never studied anything. I had never read a book. In fact, this is the first book I ever read, and I was 26. Now, I've got thousands of books today, thousands of them. I have a library here in the studio. I've got another one in the house. I love to read. I just absolutely love it. I'm reading a, a novel right now, which I very rarely do, The Ravine by Robert Pascuzzi. Uh, he's a, a client of mine, and it's a book he wrote. I read Stella Adler's The Art of Acting. I've got Think and Grow Rich. I've got The Hidden Power. And here I've got The Creative Process uh, by Troward. Um, study every day. I'll give you another one. Do not hang around with negative people. Don't hang around with negative people. And if you're getting up in years, don't hang around with old people. I never hang. People ask me how I stay young. I don't hang around old people. Now, first, it sounded like a bit of a joke, but it's the truth. I do not hang around. Most old people I know are old people. I don't want to be like them at all. I want to stay young. I want to stay active. I've got big goals, and I intend to execute them. There are three rules. Another one, Mikey. This next one, how do you stay motivated and consistently on the right frequency? Stay motivated and consistently on the right frequency by having goals. You're going to have goals. And you have to have your goals in writing. Now here, I'll show you. Here's a strange thing. Here's, um, I've got two, three gold cards in my pocket. Okay? Three gold cards in my pocket. And then here, as a bookmark, um, here I am, entering into the spirit, a gold card. And here's the other one, on yourself, a gold card. I have a lot of gold cards. Same goals written on all of them. And when you, see, when you set a goal, what you're doing is you're getting a picture of what you want. And then you paint the picture in words. And it should be in as few words as possible. And it should always start, I'm so happy and grateful now that. Now, the only thing in the future is the date. And you're guessing at that. You don't know how long it's going to take for a goal to manifest. That is governed by a law of gender. The law of gender decrees all seeds have an incubation or a gestation or an incubation period. A goal is a spiritual seed. It's something you originate in your mind. And when you plant it in your subconscious mind, that's, <laughs> it's many times more fertile than the earth. It starts to grow by the same law the plants grow. The whole universe operates by the same laws. That's why you've got to understand the laws. If you don't understand the laws, uh, you're shooting crap and you're just not, odds are pretty good you're going to lose more than you win. Um, get back on track here. Um, you stay in the right, you got to have the goal and you stay in the right frequency by staying in tune with the goal. And when you study, I study towards an end. Sandy and I talked about a goal, and then we started to study. And there's some good stuff come out of it today, because I've already done it, uh, towards that. You stay in the right frequency by hanging around with the right people and uh, keeping your eye on your goal. It's that simple. When you're in the wrong frequency, you feel bad. You see, feeling is conscious awareness of vibration. Vibration operates on frequencies. You operate on frequencies. And some people are on such a low frequency, you just don't even want to go near them. They'd scorch you. I mean, <laughs> get away from them. Hang around positive people. Kick out the negative thoughts. What's the next one there, Mikey? How do you stay persistent when breaking a paradigm? How do you stay persistent when breaking a paradigm? Oh, well, that, again, you stay persistent when you're breaking a paradigm because you have a goal. And what you're doing when you're changing a paradigm, this is important you understand this. Let me go back here. Let me help with the paradigm. Um, here's the paradigm. Let's look at this for a moment. Now, we pointed out the paradigm starts to get formed in your little life, and that's genetic. That's why you look like relatives. So all that belief system's down, and it's programmed into your subconscious mind. And then you've got it environmentally. By the time you start thinking for yourself, the cast has been dyed. It's been, it's been molded. And again, it doesn't matter how well you do in school. It's the paradigm that's controlling your behavior. 
How do you change the paradigm? Well, let's understand this. The paradigm is nothing but a multitude of habits, ideas that are fixed in the subconscious mind. A habit is an idea that's fixed in the subconscious mind that's expressed itself automatically without any conscious thought. So what you're going to do is take one or two ideas at a time and begin to reprogram yourself. Let's suppose you sleep in every day. That's one you're going to change because that, that's part of a paradigm. How long would it take to change it? I don't know, maybe 30, 60, 90 days. That's not very long. But say, every morning when I wake up, I'm going to get up. And you might set the alarm and then say, I'm going to wake up before that alarm goes off. That's the message you give your mind when you go to sleep. Now, the subconscious mind is something like the army. It always follows the last command. You say, I'm going to wake up and get up. And just before you go to sleep, you think, but I can't. You won't. You've got to go to sleep with the idea, when I wake up, I get up. And you're going to change that paradigm, and you keep doing it. In about 60 days, you'll have a new idea fixed, and the old idea is dead from a lack of nourishment. And you're starting to keep doing the same thing. Your paradigm is expressed in action. Well, it's the actions that you want to change. What's another one, Mikey? This next question, I have multiple passions and multiple purposes, but I don't know which one to pursue. I have multiple passions and multiple purposes. You do not. That, that's, you're kidding yourself. You don't have multiple purposes. Uh, a, purpose, a purpose is something that runs right into your veins. You don't have multiple. You may uh, have multiple goals. You should only have one. Let's, let's, let's look at it this way. Let's say I'm driving out of my driveway. Okay. Now, if I drive out of my driveway, I'm going south. Okay, when I drive out of my driveway, whether I back out or drive out, I'm going south. Now, let's say I've got one goal going east and another one going west. I can't go to both of them at the same time. Think of this for a moment. See, try and see if you can see this clock. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's writing on this pen. See if you can see the writing. While you're trying to figure out the writing, you've forgotten the clock. See, the truth is your conscious mind can only hold one thought at a time. You try and put two on it, that's confusion. You should only be working towards one goal at a time. But think of this. Let me look at it this way. You can make a list. You got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is a list of all the things you want. Well, you've got to pick the one you want more than anything. Now, because you just sat down and wrote, maybe five is the one you want. So that's the one you're going after. That's the one you're shooting at. Now, you're down here, and that's where you want to go, up there. You will find, as you go up there, you're dealing with frequencies, and you're moving on to a higher frequency all the time. As you get on this frequency, the good that's on that frequency is going to come to you. As you go after the one you want most, it's probably the top one, as you go after that, all these things will fall into place. You shouldn't have multiple goals. You should have one target. One target. Now, some people, um, maybe they're working on their weight, and they say that's a goal. It's not a goal. That, that's your self-image, and you don't lose weight. Now, I, I would imagine we've got one in here about weight. You know, how do you lose? You don't lose weight. You release it. You hold the image of what you want. Your body is just going to manifest the image that you've got. If you've got a fat image, you're never going to live in a thin body. You may take off 10 pounds, but I guarantee you'll put on about 12 more. See yourself at your perfect weight, looking good and feeling right. Release it. As you hold an image in your mind, your body is only going to call for whatever is necessary to fill that image. Don't weigh yourself. See yourself the way you want to be. Build the picture of your mind. Okay? Go towards one goal. Next one, Mikey. Well, you must have known what question was next because it's how do you stay disciplined when losing weight? How do you stay disciplined when you're losing weight? It doesn't take discipline. It takes understanding. You see, the person that takes discipline is trying to stop themselves eating something white, let's say. Um, they're going to get rid of the bread, the we know all that kind of stuff. Uh, carbs, I guess carbs put on weight or something. I hear that. I have never had a weight problem, so I don't know. I see myself the way I am, and that's the way I stay. I just stay that way. Um, 
you don't discipline yourself to lose weight. You gain an understanding of what weight is all about. Weight is your body. It's what your body weighs. Well, start to see the image. It's, the, the mind doesn't think in pounds. It thinks in pictures. It deals in pictures. So see yourself the way you want to be. You might get a picture of somebody's body that's the one you want and get somebody in Photoshop to take a picture of you and put your head on their body. Carry that around and look at it. Now, you may say, this is silly. I don't care whether it's silly or not. If you stare at it long enough, you're going to become it because whatever goes into your subconscious mind has to manifest with and through your body. You can say, but my, I know it's not me. Your intellect does, but your subconscious doesn't. And whatever you put into your subconscious over and over and over again manifests in your life. Give me another one, please. How do I forgive myself and others? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, how do I forgive myself and others? Forgive means to let go of completely, abandon, let it go, completely, abandon it. You try and change the past, try and change the time you get out of bed this morning. You're never going to, it's going to stand for eternity. Try and change what you had for lunch yesterday. Let it go. Just let it go. Forgive means to let go of completely. Let it go. I think that's how you forgive. You understand what forgiveness means. And you don't forgive the person to help them. You forgive the person to help you. You're releasing that idea that bothers you. Let it go. Okay. This next question, Bob, what do you do when you are not, or when you are in vibration with the laws of the universe, but the people around you are not? Mm -hmm. That's pretty, that's pretty, uh, pretty common with somebody new starting to study. If they, um, the people around you are not in harmony with the law and they don't understand all this, keep studying. You're going to find that eventually you're going to wander away from them. You will wander away because you don't have anything in common with them. And you're continually trying to reject all their energy. You're going to attract to you the people that you're in harmony with. You've, like, Mikey, I've worked with you for how long? Ten years? Almost. Almost ten years. Well, I've watched your life change like night and day. You rarely hang around with any of the people you used to hang around with. Some of them, never. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, you see, most people say, well, I don't want to leave them. You don't have to. They'll leave you because they'll get they don't, they're not comfortable around you. If you're always positive and somebody else is always negative, they're not comfortable around you. You're going to attract people that you're in comfort, in, in harmony with. Now, just don't focus on their negativity. If you think they're negative, then when you're thinking that, you're in the negative vibration. Just understand they don't understand. Forgive them for they don't know what they're saying. Did you ever hear that before? Next one there, Mikey. How do you overcome the fear of the unknown? Well, we talked about that earlier. You overcome the fear of the unknown by uh, developing understanding. You develop understanding. And then you, just because you can't see it physically, you can see it mentally and you gain an understanding. If you hold the image of yourself already there, ultimately you will move in that direction. Understanding is really the key. This program, we got a program coming out. You've got to check it out. I'm going to tell you, it is phenomenal. And it's the repetition that you need. There's 12 lessons in this program. We're going to study each lesson for 10 days. You will study with us for 10 days. You're going to get 24 videos. We're sending two videos on each one. You get the recorded lesson. You get the printed lesson. We're going to stay with you for 120 days. You'll need a telescope to look back and see where you were. If you will commit to follow everything we're suggesting, for 120 days you can do it. See, that's what Ray Stanford said to me. He said, Bob, you do exactly what I tell you. You can have anything you want. I did not believe that, but I believed he believed it. You don't have to believe if you believe I believe it. I've been believing it for a long, long time. 57 years. Poor kid. Didn't know where he was going. Become wealthy. Have fun. Great people. Stay healthy. <laughs> you know. Give me another one. 
This next one, please explain the law of gestation and gender for the goal to manifest. Oh, that's a good, that's a good one to end on. There's, there's a series of laws that govern the whole universe. Gender is one of the laws. The law of gender decrees that all seeds have a gestation or an incubation period. And that period of time must elapse for it to attract to it everything it needs to manifest. Now, a seed, if you take a carrot seed and dissect it, you won't find a carrot in it. If you take an acorn and cut it up into small bits, you're not going to find an oak tree. If you don't put it in an environment that's conducive to its unfoldment, it will never grow. If you take the carrot seed, plant it in the earth, just down so far, and then you water the earth, fertilize the earth, around 70 days later, you'll have a carrot. Now let's suppose it just starts to stick its nose through the earth and you get excited, you're going to help it grow. You'll kill the carrot. A carrot is a seed. It has an incubation period before it can manifest in form. It's a nucleus or a pattern plan that's in a seed. When the seed is planted in the earth, it only attracts to it the particles of earth that are in harmonious vibration with it. Earl Nightingale put this very well in a Strangest Secret record. He said you could plant nightshade and not a sixteenth of an inch away you can plant corn, a sweet food. One will grow with just as great an abundance as the other. Now it's not the same earth that causes the nightshade, the deadly poison, that causes the, the, the corn to grow. There's a pattern plan, a nucleus. It's in the seed. It controls the vibratory rate of the seed. And that vibration dictates what it attracts to it. Now let's suppose, let me digress. Let's suppose I take a couple of drops of water and I put it on top of a glass top table. And I push those drops of water together till they touch. Bang, like that, I've got one drop of water. Have you ever heard the saying, what God has joined together gives it new meaning. You will never get those two drops of water from that one drop. You can, drop, you can take and separate that one drop into two, but you never the same, same two little masses of molecules. Well, as the seed vibrates, it sets up an attractive force, and particles of energy come, and they become one with the seed. The seed does the only thing it can do. It expands and a shoot comes out of the bottom and a shoot starts to come out of the top and it keeps expanding and pretty soon a shoot sticks its nose through the earth. Then it's attracting from the earth, but it's also attracting energy from the atmosphere. And voila, before long you've got the carrot or you've got the oak tree. That's the way you work. Your goal becomes a seed and you plant it in the subject of mind, the subconscious, the universal side of your personality. It's many times more fertile than the earth. And when you hold that image and you keep feeding it, you keep imaging it, you keep visualizing it, that controls your vibration. And you will be attracted to whatever you need for the manifestation of the seed and you don't know what it is. Now here's another thing. You don't know how long it's going to take. Let me explain it this way. Let's suppose this represents where you set the goal. This represents where you reach the goal. This is called a timeline. Now, although we don't know what the timeline is, we guess at it, but we do not know what the gestation period is for a spiritual seed. We didn't used to know what it was for a physical seed. Now we do. We've gained that awareness. Awareness is all we're ever going to develop, understanding awareness. Now, although we don't know what the gestation period is, we do know that we can shorten it. And you shorten it through concentration. Concentration increases amplitude of vibration. I'll digress and I'll explain this another way to you. Feeling is awareness of vibration. If somebody's behind you in a shopping mall and they're staring at you, you will feel it. And you turn around, sure enough, somebody's staring, they turn and walk away. I wonder, why were they staring at me? You feel it. Their energy is coming into their consciousness. Remember I talked about the candle or the dot in the wall? They're focused. 
They've got their will at work. They're focused and they're zeroing. They're sending a strong charge of energy. Concentration increases amplitude of vibration. It makes the charge of energy much stronger. It snaps your brain cells. They start feel and you feel it. Well, the more you concentrate on your goal, the shorter the span of incubation, the sooner you'll reach the goal. The law of gender decrees that all seeds, all seeds, bar none, has a gestation or an incubation period. When the seed for a baby is planted, it takes approximately 280 days. When you try and force it, you do it damage. You have to let nature take its course. That's a lot. Listen, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Mikey, I want to thank you again. That was very good of you. Mikey gets all sharpened up and then gets on screen for us. She is our marketing director, and she is one sharp lady, I'm going to tell you. She does a lot of good work with us. And we enjoy having her. I think she enjoys being here. I hope she does, anyway. Um, yeah. Sandy Gallagher, I promised. I talked to you today. She has agreed. She's going to make a video, and we'll put it up on visualization. She's a master at it, I'm going to tell you. This woman is really good at it. She, um, she became a partner of mine 10 years ago. And what she's done with our company in 10 years is absolutely amazing. And a lot of it is through visualization. She is a very, very sharp woman, a genius, really. She's going to teach you something about visualization. So um, if you want to find out more about this program, leave your information. Go to where it tells you on the screen, go to proctorgallagherinstitute.com forward slash new program. And uh, we'll give you the information on it. Now, we told you we we're going to do two or three of these. We still have all kinds of questions that weren't answered. Um, so we will do another one. I'm just not sure when. I wasn't aware that I was going to do it this fast, but I got talking last night with Matt. Matt says, let's do another one tomorrow night. So I said, okay. And then I phoned Mikey, and Mikey said, okay, so here we are. So I want to thank you all. Mikey, I want to thank you. It's been a real pleasure having you. It's a profit and a pleasure having you. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've enjoyed it, let us know. If you like this, we could do more of this. We've got a studio here, multiple cameras, great technical people, and it's a lot of fun. See you all later. Bye now.